Well, praise the Lord, everybody, and everybody, praise the Lord. Welcome to Time of Transformation. I am your humble host. This is Anthony McCool coming to you from the beautiful city of Houston, Texas. We're coming in five minutes early, right at three o'clock. We're going to break the bread of life. Three o'clock, we're going to break the bread of life. But I'm coming on here. Let's give everybody a chance to get in here and get on here and come and hear what thus saith the Lord. But welcome in. Uh, <clears throat> I hope you're having a good week and I hope you made it into the house of the Lord this morning. And I hope that God has been good to you this week. I know he's been better to me than I could be to myself. I was thinking about an uh, old song that my pastor's wife used to sing when I was a little boy. And if you know it, why don't you sing it with me? I just want to come and enter into worship <clears throat> and call upon the name of the Lord and cause Him or provoke Him to come into our presence and to begin to sit upon each of us. There's an old song that says, Welcome into this place. Welcome into this broken vessel. You desire to abide in the praises of your people. So we lift our hands and we lift our hearts as we offer up this praise unto your name. Somebody tell him, hey Holy Spirit, welcome into this place. Welcome into this broken vessel. You desire to abide in the praises of your people. So we lift our hands and we lift our hearts as we offer up this praise unto your name. Anointing fall on me. Anointing fall on me. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me, anointing, let it fall on me, anointing, fall on me, anointing, fall on me. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me, anointing fall on me. There's another song that's a little bit newer. It says, I sing praises to your name. Ooh. Praises to your name. For your name is great and greatly to be praised. I sing praises to your name. Somebody sing a praise to the name of Jesus. Praises to your name. Oh, for your name is great. And greatly to be praised. We're about to go into the word of the Lord, but sing that one more time. Say, I sing praises to your name. Oh, praises to your name. Oh, for your name is great. 
and greatly to be praised. Welcome to Time of Transformation. It's three o'clock on the dot and I am excited to be in this place. I feel the Holy Spirit already as we begin to just talk and sing about His name and His power. If you have your Bibles, I want you to begin to turn them with me to the book of Isaiah chapter number 26. And then John chapter number 16, if you're following along. Isaiah chapter number 26. And then John chapter number 16. If you want to do a little Holy Ghost Pentecostal, put your finger on the back and put your finger on the front. Uh, Old Testament, New Testament, however we got to do it, we're going to get it done. Uh, but as always, Time of Transformation is a ministry of Iglesia Trinidad right here in Houston, Texas. The address is 11,602 Bobcat Road. We have church every Sunday, 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. Wednesdays at 7.30, small groups and prayer. Friday nights, we have an evangelistic service at 7.30. And then Saturday, celebrate recovery with me, yours truly. You get to hear me. You get to be around me. You get to, uh, And when you leave, I say, I'm glad you got to see me. Thank God. So, if you have any questions, if you like what you hear, if the Lord is moving up on your heart, if you want to book our ministry, we travel, we go all over the city. I'm willing to go all over the world if I have to, but I want to take this gospel to every nation, to every place that will allow me and that God will allow me. So, uh, the information, all of that information is in the description. If you want to get a hold of us, uh, send your prayer request if you want us to pray with you about something whatever it is uh, all the information is there if you have any questions feel free to comment share uh, we also have a YouTube channel it's time of transformation as well if you can do me a favor if you've never went to the YouTube channel go to the YouTube channel for me subscribe like and share the videos that are on there. I'm trying to get enough subscribers on there so that way we can go live from uh, so we can go live from a mobile device. Uh, while we're preaching today, listen. There's somebody in your life that needs to hear this word. I've got a word today, and there's somebody in your life that needs to hear this word today. I want you, while we're preaching, comment as much as you can and as much as you want. Uh, share the broadcast and get this to as many people that can hear this word. Somebody needs to hear this word today. We are going to talk about some very important things. And uh, I'm going to share with you some revelation that I got this week. I'm excited. And then last but certainly not least, right before we get into the word of the Lord. Isaiah 26, 15 through 18, and John chapter number 16, verse 21. Go there. Get there, get there, get there. But before that, uh, just a quick announcement. I made an announcement on my pop-up live uh, yesterday that I would be preaching at my church on Friday. Okay, well, I made a miscalculation. I'm actually going to be preaching at my church, Iglesia Trinidad, 11,602 Bobcat Road, not Friday, but Sunday. This next Sunday, not today obviously, but next Sunday, I will be at my church preaching in the 10 a.m. service, 11,602 Bobcat Road. What I'm going to do is, is I believe I'm going to set this up, and we are going to have time of transformation from the sanctuary of Iglesia Trinidad. And that, what that means is, I almost started to speak Spanish, I said entonces. <laughs> what that means is, is that we are not going to have time of transformation at 3 o'clock on Sunday. We are going to have time of transformation. I see you, Aunt Brenda. I love you. I see you, Mom. I see you, Pastor Weary. I love you guys. I hope you enjoy the word today. I've got a mighty, mighty word and I can't wait to share it. I love every one of you, and I thank you for being on here. Uh, but I'm going to get this going live uh, somewhere around 11 o'clock a.m. is usually when we start the preaching, right, baby? Somewhere around that time. Just, just be watching for me to go live. It'll give you a notification. And we're going to do time of transformation right from the sanctuary of Iglesia Trinidad next Sunday. So... Get ready, get set, let's go. I've got a word for next Sunday and I've got a word for this Sunday. 
I am excited. If you have it, Isaiah chapter number 26, starting at verse 15, the word of the Lord reads like this. Isaiah chapter number 26, starting at verse 15. Hey, Dad, I love you. I see you. Isaiah chapter number 26, verse 15. Starting at verse 15, we're going to go to verse 18, and then I'm going to take you over to John 16, 21. The word of the Lord reads like this. I'm reading to you from the New Living Translation. If it sounds funny, uh, I've just become very... Uh, fond of this translation of the Bible. It reads a little bit easier. Isaiah 26, starting at verse 15. Said, O Lord, you have made our nation great. Yes, you have made us great. You have extended our borders and we give you the glory. Lord, in distress we searched for you. We prayed beneath the burden of your discipline. Just as pregnant woman, just as a pregnant woman writhes and cries out in pain as she gives birth, so were we in your presence, Lord. We too writhe in agony, but nothing comes of our suffering. We have not given salvation to the earth, nor brought life into the world. Let me read to you John chapter number 16, verse 21 from the New Living Translation. John chapter 16, verse 21. It will be like a woman suffering the pains of labor. When her child is born, her anguish gives way to joy because she has brought a new baby into the world. It will be like a woman suffering the pains of labor. When her child is born, her anguish gives way to joy because she has brought a new baby into the world. Now let me do something right here. Let me take you back to Isaiah chapter number 26 in the New, uh, new Living Translation in verse 18. That's where I'm really going to draw my text. I just wanted to give you a little additional reading. Isaiah 26 and 18. It said, We too writhe in agony, but nothing comes of our suffering. We have not given salvation to the earth, nor brought life into the world. Now let me read that to you in the Amplified Version of the Bible, and then we're going to pray. Isaiah chapter number 26 and verse 18 in the Amplified Version of the Bible. It said, We have been with child... We have twisted and struggled in... La I don't know about you, but I feel the Holy Ghost already and I'm just reading the Word. It said, We have been with child and we have twisted and struggled in labor. We gave birth, and I want you to pay attention to this. We gave birth as it seems only to wind. We gave birth as it seems only to wind. We could not accomplish salvation for the earth, nor were inhabitants of the world born. We gave birth as it seems only to the wind. Today I want to preach to you as long as the Lord will allow me to preach it. This topic. Break the cycle. Break the the cycle. Father, I realize that I am inadequate at best. That without the breath of your Holy Spirit and without the guidance of your anointing, I am nothing. So we worship you today and we glorify you. And when we think that we've run out of reasons to give you glory, we give glory to your glory. For you are worthy and you are worthy to be praised. I ask today, God, that you would hide me behind Calvary's cross, that the words that I say would not be my own, but that they would be yours. That you would speak to us in a way that it would be relevant. 
Speak to us today, not from the outer court, but speak to us day, today from the holy of holies, that we might hear what thus saith the Lord. I've come to declare, God, that we, your people, have not come from the, for the sincere milk of your word, but we have come for meat, that we might eat it and be satisfied and be changed by the power of your word. For your word says that the entrance of your word brings light. Let there be light in places where there was darkness. Let there be light where there was obscurity. Let there be light where there were things that were un not understood. Let there be light today in the places that we need enlightened. For your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And I pray, as I pray every time I get behind this sacred desk, I pray, preach me. Preach me, God, until somebody decides that they don't have to live the way that they've been living anymore. Preach me today until a sinner's heart is pricked. Preach me today until a saint is encouraged, until they realize their full potential in you. Preach me today, God, until generational curses and cycles are broken. Preach me today, God, until the yokes of bondage fall off your people. Preach me today, God, until every yoke is destroyed by the power of your anointing. Preach me today, God, until your glory falls and shakes us. That when we get done today, we would not be who we were, but we would be a different people, changed by the power of your blood in your name. And we will give you the glory and the praise in Jesus Christ's precious name. And the church would say, Amen. Amen. Break the cycle. This chapter here of Isaiah is labeled as a song of trust in God's protection or a song of praise to the Lord. If we were to read through the entire chapter, it speaks of singing songs, trusting in the Lord. And how God can prosper His people. And how He can make a nation great. As we begin to examine our text, we find though, this chapter is not always about victory. The picture is painted that some victories are only realized through harsh realities. Sometimes great pain and even disappointment. For the writer here in the book of Isaiah said... That we were as pregnant women, writhing and crying out in pain as we gave birth. We were like that in your presence, O oh God. We too writhe in agony, but nothing comes of our suffering. And we have not given salvation to the earth, nor brought life into the world. Uh, the Amplified Version said it better. It said we gave birth as it seems only to the wind. This text speaks of a time, ladies and gentlemen, where God's people had realized failure. I want you to hear me today. To be in the promises of God because they were determined to attempt to try to accomplish the promises of God outside of the will of God. And I've come to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that you can never have the promises of God outside of the will of God. Amen. It never can, never will, never shall work. Hear the preacher today. You cannot have the promises of God outside of His will, outside of His Word, and outside of His Logos Word, and outside of His Rhema Word. Amen. You cannot get the promises of God without the will of God. So we arrive here at Isaiah chapter number 26 and verse 18 and we find some very harsh words. The prophet speaks of God's people as one would speak of a woman who had been with child. But eventually the verbiage here and the way that it is portrayed is it speaks about a woman that had been with child but it also talks about miscarriage or abortion. It says by the prophet Isaiah that uh, this woman, which is the church of the living God, which are the people of the living God, uh, eventually they miscarried their baby. And the people of God had entered into a cycle. And I want you to hear me today. Sometimes cycles must be broken before Amen. victories yes. can be realized. Amen. I feel the Holy Ghost now. There 
are some cycles that have been put in place in our life that have been causing us to give birth only to what would seem to be wind because we are in cycles that are not allowing us to fully bring to fruition the promises of God. But I have come as a vessel and an anointed man of God to preach to you good tidings because I hear the voice of the Lord saying today that it's time to break the cycle. It's time to break the cycle. I don't care what the devil said about you. I don't care what the devil said to you. I don't care what the devil said about your family. I don't care what the devil said about your marriage. I don't care what the devil said about anything I know that greater that is he that is in me than he that is in the world oh somebody hear me today there have been things that have ran in your family alcoholism has ran in your family drug addiction has ran into your family uh, all these depression and all this stuff maybe ran in your family but listen it only ran in your family until it ran into you because I have come to declare that you are going to break the curse that the generations before you have put upon you that the enemy had meant for you that we are going to break the curses that just because your mama or your daddy was an alcoholic that doesn't mean that you have to be an alcoholic just because your mom and your daddy were drug addicts don't mean you have to be a drug addict we're breaking the cycle today whatever it is that has caused you to be sterile whatever it is that has caused you to not bring forth the promises of God we are going to break it today we are going to break the cycle today somebody hear me I feel the Holy Ghost ah, God Almighty we read Isaiah chapter number 26 and verse 18 in the Amplified Bible. In the Amplified Bible, the KJV, the NASB, and in other translations, they all use the word to describe the outcome of their conception. They all use this same word. They use the word wind. They use that word to describe what happened when they gave birth to whatever it was that they were pregnant with. They called it wind. Now... At first glance, I immediately interpreted that in my flesh as if they were saying that they had given birth to nothing. But the Spirit led me to do more in-depth study on that word wind. I want you to hear me. I have to already slowed down for a purpose because I want you to hear this. That wind, that word wind, as used here in verse 18 of Isaiah chapter number 26, I discovered that it is actually the word ruach in the original Hebrew. Now hear me. The definition of the word ruach uh, stated very simply can be translated to the spirit, breath, or wind of God. The Greek equivalent word for ruach is pneuma. Uh, the Greek equivalent word is pneuma, which is the same word that Jesus used in John chapter number 3 and verse 8 to describe the moving of the Holy Ghost when he was speaking to Nicodemus. So the Bible is indicating to us today that God's people, because of a cycle that they had been in, did not miscarry wind or air. They miscarried the spirit and the breath of God. Oh, God, somebody hear me today. They did not miscarry as it would seem wind. It said that it seemed like it was wind to them. But the problem was is they were not spiritually astute enough to realize that what they had been pregnant with was the breath or the spirit of the living God. And I have come here on a divine assignment from the Holy Ghost 
tell somebody today that you have been impregnated with the spirit and the breath of God. You have been impregnated with the purpose of God. And the enemy would like for you to continue in some of the cycles that you have been in. Because if we stay in those cycles, those cycles will destroy what is in your belly. But I hear God saying, send my people a warning, Anthony. Son, tell them what is on the horizon. Tell them what it is that is happening. And tell them that I am a God that is full of grace. Because I want you to hear me today. That you do not have to keep being unproductive. You do not have to keep giving birth to air as it would seem. You do not have to keep giving birth to miscarried and uh, aborted babies in the spirit. But you can begin to give birth to the fruit of what God has put down inside of you. You can begin to give birth to what it is that God has put in you. But they miscarried the spirit and they miscarried the breath of God because of the cycle that they were in. They described it as seeming only to be wind because when you are in a cycle of spiritual immaturity, God could manifest Himself before you and you wouldn't even know that it was Him. I've been sent here today to tell somebody that God has been manifesting Himself in your presence, but you don't even know it's Him because you're not mature enough yet to understand uh, what it is that uh, He's doing and where it is that He's trying to take you. Amen. I want you to understand today that uh, what is going on in the atmosphere and what is going on in the spirit because when you are in a spirit when you are in a cycle of spiritual immaturity God could show up right in the middle of your situation and you wouldn't even know that it was God because you're not where you need to be God could manifest himself before you in your home, at your job in your children the promise of God could come and you would not know that it was him because you're not where you need to be but I have been sent here by the power of the spirit of the living God to come and to preach to somebody today that it is time for us to break out of the cycles that we have been in that have caused us to not be able to see that have caused us to not be able to know when God is doing something in our life and now after today because the spirit of the God of the, of the universe is going to begin to reveal the these things to us and through us what is going to begin to happen is is that God is going to get his glory in the earth no matter what and even if it's not us he's going to birth his promises but I hear a cry in the spirit saying that if God is going to get his glory no matter what it might as well be me it might as well be us it's time to break the cycles it's time to break the habits it's time to break the addictions. It's Amen. time to break the mindsets. It's time to break the failures. It's time to break the behaviors. It's time Amen. to break the attitudes that have caused us to abort God's promises for our lives. Everything that keeps us from becoming what God has called us to be. That cycle must be broken in Amen. Jesus name. Amen. If God is going to get his glory, it might as well it might as well be us that he does it in and it's time Time to break the cycle. I want somebody to rise up in this place before this thing is over and say that if God is going to do what he wants to do, he might as well do it in me. And I don't want to miss it. I don't want to miss it. I want to be a part of what God is doing in this last day. Somebody give him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Recently, the Holy Spirit began to speak to me about this word, cycle. Often, we believe the words cycle and season are synonymous. But the Lord said something very profound to me. I want you to hear this today. 
There is a difference in a cycle and a season. Somebody hear me. There is a difference in a cycle and a season. A season is subject to change based upon time and the revolution of outside forces. A cycle can remain the same over the years, even as the seasons change. There is a difference in a cycle and a season. A season is subject to change based upon time and the revolution of outside forces. A cycle can remain the same over the years even as the seasons are changing. Maybe there is someone that has been suffering through the same cycle. Even as seasons have changed, the circumstances of life, they remain the same. Mm -hmm. The common denominator throughout all seasons is the one that is experiencing the cycle. This is not something that anybody wants to hear. But as soon as we begin to deal with the we problem, as soon as we begin to deal with the person in the mirror, that is who, that is how we are going to begin to see the glory of the God of the universe. The common denominator throughout all seasons of life is the one that is experiencing the cycle. It is you. It is me. All the cycles that we have been in and all the cycles that we have gone through, we have changed jobs. We have changed uh, uh, addresses. We have changed cities, states, yeah. places. And the same problems have followed us. It's different zip codes, different phone numbers, different places. I've come to tell you today that God is not worried about zip codes. God is not worried about uh, phone numbers. God is not worried about cities. God is not worried about states. God is worried about the person that keep yes. moving from place to place to place but never changing and never becoming what he has called them to be it's time to break the cycle ladies and gentlemen it's time to break the cycle of addiction it's time to break the cycle of depression it's time to break the cycle that has held you back I've come to tell somebody today that he made you and he made you fearfully and wonderfully you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, Jesus knew you. God knew you. And he has made it up in his mind that he is going to get his glory out of you one way or the other. And it's time for us to decide today that I'm not going to keep living the way that I've been living. But there's got to be a change in the Holy Ghost that causes me to walk different. That causes me to talk different. That causes me to pray. That causes me to fast. That causes me to worship. That causes me to be faithful. That causes me to break this word and see what it says about my life. There have been too many cycles that are robbing us of our destiny. There have been too many times where you have given birth to the wind and you thought it was just the wind, but it was really the breath of God, but you didn't know what it was. And I have come to tell you that from now on, from this day forth, I am going to prophesy this into your life. You will know from now on that it's not just the wind. It's the breath and the glory of God. And you're full of it, baby. That's why the enemy has been fighting you for so long. Because you're full of the glory. Ah, that's why the enemy has been mad at you so long. It's because you're full of the glory. And if the enemy can ever get a hold of what's inside of you. He will. He'll cause you to abort it. He'll cause you to miscarry it. But I've come to tell you that it's time to bring that baby to full fruition and give birth to the miracle and the promises of God. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost now. Hallelujah.
It is no secret that often we identify unproductive cycles in our lives, spiritually, mentally, and physically. I want you to hear me today. The problem is, is that too often we are unaware of how to break the cycle and we have become too comfortable even in our own discomfort and mess. You say, what do you mean by that, preacher? That means that even though your life is not what it's supposed to be, uh, I was in this cycle. I was in a cycle of addiction. I was in a cycle of depression. I was, I don't want to preach to nobody else. Let me just preach to me. Anthony was in a cycle of addiction to drugs and alcohol. I was in a cycle of depression. I was broken inside and didn't know how to fix it. I knew that there was a God, but I didn't know how to get him in to my situation. And what had happened was, is I had been in that cycle for so long that even though that, that cycle was not healthy, I became comfortable in it because I was so fearful to change. But yes. just as we can see the unproductive nature of the cycles that we get in, we can at times also sense that we were created to be carriers of the yes. glory of God. I feel the Holy Ghost. We can also sense that, ah, this thing going on in me, this is not God. This is the enemy. This is demonic forces. This is demonic attachments. This is the work of the enemy. But sometimes too, you can feel something down in the pit of your stomach that says, oh, I'm better than this. I don't have to live this way. I was not created to live this way. But God has put something in my belly because Jesus said, if you believe on me, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Hey, God Almighty, I hear God say that it's time for the church to get the living water back in your belly that we can give birth to life and not death. Yes. The times when we can see that we were created to be carriers of the glory of God. When this comes into perspective, we have to begin to ask ourselves, what is it that's causing me to miscarry the breath and the promises of God? Many of us would rather continue to live in denial rather than to slip the mask off that I've been wearing, yes. that I've been trying to play a part for everybody. I've been trying to be a good dad, mask. I've been trying to be a good employee, mask. I've been trying to be a good husband, mask. I've been trying to do all the things that I know how to do, but deep down inside I'm empty. Deep down, I feel the Holy Ghost now. Deep down inside something's broken in me. Deep down inside I don't know how to deal with it. Deep down inside I feel like that I'm never going to give birth to the promises of God. Deep down inside I keep on feeling like I'm giving birth to just wind. And the Holy Ghost keeps coming upon me, but it never does what it's supposed to do. And I cannot blame that on God. So when I am not giving birth to the promises of God, I have to begin to examine what is it in me that is causing me to miscarry His breath and His spirit. <sighs> Say, Anthony, that's some hard preaching. This word ministered to me first, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Two years ago, I finally came to the point where I was so desperate for God that I said, God, what is it in me? I quit blaming it on everybody else. I quit blaming it on the ex-wife. I quit blaming it on my relationships. I quit blaming it on my children. I quit blaming it on this, and I quit blaming it on that. And I said, God, what is it in me that is broken, that is causing me to miscarry your calling and your promise for my life? Because whatever it is, I need you to fix it. I'm not worried about nobody else. I'm not worried about anybody else. Fix me. Fix me. I have to ask myself, what is it 
that's causing me to miscarry God's glory. I want you to hear this word. The Spirit of the Lord said this to me this week and He said, Anthony, I want you to say this to my people. He said that we must become willing, not just you, me, all of us, we must become willing to confront the unproductive parts of our lives. We must break out of old cycles and we must break into new cycles. What was it that caused God's people to prematurely birth a promise and not be able to recognize it? We must come to maturity so we can recognize these things. It is time to break the cycle that has been causing us to miscarry the promises of God. Oh, Rabashete de Yandabatagi. Hallelujah. I want you to understand today that we serve a God, the only God. We keep trying to live in the past, but we ain't fixing anything. We keep trying to go into the future, but we can't go into the future. This is not back to the future. Come on, big fly. There is no back to the future. There is no going back in the past. I can't fix my past. And I can't even do anything about the future. The only thing that I can do is take care of my today. And if I do what I'm supposed to do today, God will take care of my tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But let me give you some revelation about who God is. Because there are some people that may listen to this today. That way down in your family line... There are things that you couldn't control. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Good God Almighty. There are things in your family line that you couldn't control. And now you're afraid that it's going to continue on with the next generation. Your children. Your grandchildren. Those generational curses we know, right. they pass on and they go to, from generation to generation to generation. But I believe that God sent me here to tell you something and tell you something very, very important. And He wants me to let you know today that He is the only God that can go back into the past and whatever it was that carried on into your bloodline. He can go into the past and He can break it. And when He breaks it in the past, it's going to break it for you in the present, but then Amen. it breaks it for your children in the right. future. Yes. Somebody hear me. Ah, somebody's had cancer in your bloodline. God can go back to that great grandmother or that great grandfather and he can break that seed of cancer, that spirit of infirmity that goes all the way back in your bloodline. And when he breaks it in the past, it's going to take care of you in the present and it's going to be there for your children in the future. Come on, somebody hear Hear this preacher today. It's time to give it all to God because He's the one that can break the cycle. He's the one that can go back into the past and fix what was in the past and give me a present so that I can have a future. Oh, hallelujah. God says, I hear it and I want to prophesy to somebody. He said, I'm going into some of y'all's past and there was an uncle, a great grandfather, a grandfather that did some stuff or that was a certain way and you're afraid that it's going to carry on into your bloodline God says I'm going to break it in the past and it's going to fix you in the present and then it's going to take care of your children in the future we're here to break the cycle today no more living in the past no more living in the future we are going to do what we can do today for Jesus and if we do what we've got to do if we follow his word if we are faithful to his commandments he will give us a future Hallelujah. this is it this is it this is my last point <coughs> I 
This is it. This right here is going to be so simple that you're going to need somebody to help you mess it up. When the Lord gave me this thought, I said, Lord, that is too simple. I was almost embarrassed that I was going to share something so simple. But God said, it doesn't matter what you say or how you say it. It matters who is the God that is in you that's causing you to say it. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what you say. It's all about the God that causes you to say it. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost. This is it. The problem with certain cycles. Hear me. Is that certain cycles can affect levels. The problem with cycles is that certain cycles can affect levels. An elevator or an escalator uses an internal system of cycles and it will run through those cycles. And those cycles are what cause the elevator or the escalator to go up from one level to another. But when a cycle gets stuck in an elevator or an escalator, the elevator or the escalator will either stay on the ground or it will stay at the level that it was, but it will never go to the next level because it's stuck in the wrong cycle. Uh -huh. Amen. We are much like the elevator or the escalator. Because when we get caught in bad and or wrong cycles, it causes us to no longer be able to elevate. Therefore, we stay on the ground or we stay where we were and we never reach the next level. When they call in the repair person, he knows how to break the cycle and get the machine going up again. I've come to tell somebody today that if you're stuck in a cycle and that cycle has caused you to not be able to elevate or go to the next level, you're stuck on the ground level or you're stuck where you've been, it's time to call on King Jesus because he is the master repairman and he will break the cycle. He will heal you and he will set you free and he will break the cycle that has been causing you to be on the ground or not be able to elevate and when he breaks the cycle you will begin to feel yourself begin to elevate and ascend to the next level I hear that in the spirit that God wants me to tell somebody that it's time for you to get back in the right direction again it's time for you to start going up again it's time for you to start going from glory to glory to glory it's time for you to break the cycles it's time to break the addiction it's time to break the depression it's time to break the infirmity it's time to break the problem it's time to break the circumstances it's time to break the habits I'm finishing with this. Some cycles cause us to miscarry God's spirit and purpose for our lives. When this happens, we find ourselves looking at dead things. How many to know tonight and or today that when cycles stay a certain way, miscarry. And when they miscarry, it's dead. When we miscarry the promises of the breath of God, we find ourselves looking at dead things, dead promises, dead hope, dead future. And when we realize that we ourselves were never able from within ourselves to accomplish deliverance in our life and in our situation, 
Then as I look at my dead situation, I look at it square in the eye. And I realize I am in need of a God that can resurrect dead things. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus stood at the tomb of Lazarus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. And Lazarus' sister said to Jesus, If you would have just been here, my brother Lazarus wouldn't have died. So what she was saying is, is that I know that you could have healed him when he was sick. But now that he's dead, mm -hmm. it's over with. But Jesus said something very interesting to her. He said, woman, I am the resurrection and the life. Somebody hear me today. We're not serving a dead God. We are not serving a, a God that cannot move. And we are not serving a high priest that is not touched with the feelings of our infirmities. But we serve a God that says, I am not just the resurrection, but I am the life. And everything that has life, has life because I gave it. I give life and I take it away. And if it died, I can give it life back because I am the resurrection and the life. Hallelujah. I realize today I am in need of a God that can resurrect dead things. If you don't know that you're serving a God that can resurrect dead things, just ask Jairus about his daughter. She was sick at the house. And he said, Jesus, if you just come to my house, I know that you, the Holy mm -hmm. Ghost, can heal my daughter. But when he was on the way, there was a woman with the issue of blood. She blocked him and she touched the hem of Jesus' garment and she was made whole. But by the time that they got to Jairus' house, somebody from Jairus' house came out and said, Master, ah, while you were on your way to get Jesus, your daughter died. Oh, God. And then Jesus steps into the room and I want you. Oh, God, I feel the Holy Ghost now. I feel my preach coming on now. Jesus walks into the house and they said, Master, the, the maid is dead. And he said, I, I want you to hear what your God said. Your God, his name is Jesus. And I want you to hear what Jesus said to the people in the house. He said, don't worry. She's not dead. She's just asleep. Because when dead situations, when dead things are Rise, and you're looking at a dead situation listen to me it's not even dead to God it's not even dead to Jesus it's just asleep and all he has to do is speak one word and one word will resurrect the dead things in your life one word will break the cycle one word will break the addiction one word will break the depression one word will kill the generational curse once and for all and he said everybody Get out of the house because there's too much doubt in here. And whenever they all got out of the house, Jesus said to the little girl who was dead, but he said she was just asleep. He said to the little girl, he said, maid, rise up. And she got up out of that deathbed alive as can be. And Jesus said, give her meat. Give her meat. Don't give her milk. Give her meat. There's been a dead church in this hour. COVID it was a cycle. COVID has been keeping his church dead. COVID has been keeping God's church from being what it's called to be. But I hear Jesus saying, rise up, maid, and begin to eat meat. No more milk for you. But we are going to eat meat. He is going to resurrect a dead church. He's going to resurrect dead things. He's going to resurrect 
dead situations, dead marriages, dead relationships, dead problems. I serve the God who says, I am the resurrection and the life. I can bring back what was dead and make it live again. If you need not, if you don't think he can do it with people, oh, he did it for himself, for this same power that raised Jesus from the dead. Ah, it will raise you. It will quicken your mortal body. It will raise you from the dead. Here it is. Isaiah chapter number 26 and verse 19. The verse right after our text. But those who die in the Lord will live. Their bodies will rise again. Those who sleep in the earth will rise up and sing for joy. For your life-giving light will fall like dew on your people in the place of the dead. I've come to prophesy that to somebody today. That the light of the dew of God, of the Holy Spirit, is getting ready to fall on some of your situations today. And when it begins to fall, your people, His people, are going to begin to rise up from dead places, from ashes, and you are going to see the salvation of the Lord your God. Hear me. Woo! I feel the Holy Ghost. Oh, I've got to close. I've got to close. Mm, God Almighty. What's sad is, I've got to close and I just now started feeling like preaching. Ah, God Almighty. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost in here today. Psalm 107, verse 4 through 7. This is it. This is really it. Every preacher gets three closings. I've already did my second. This is my last one, I promise. Psalm 107, verses 4 through 7. I promise you, this is it. Psalm 107, verses 4 through 7. This is what it said about God's people. It said, Some wandered in the wilderness, lost and homeless, hungry and thirsty. They nearly died. Lord, help! They cried in their trouble. And He rescued them from their distresses. He led them straight to safety, to a city where they can live. Let them praise the Lord for His great love and for the wonderful things that He has done for them. For someone today, all you need to do is cry, Lord, help me. And He will break the cycle. There it is. The tablet's off. I'm done. I want you to lift your hands and I'm going to say a prayer over you and then we're done. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you with humility and I pray that every person under the sound of my voice would begin to hear your word and that we would not just be hearers of the word, but we would be doers of your word. God, that we would begin to hear what thus saith the Lord and that the entrance of your word would bring light. Every situation that has been dark, bring light. Every situation that has been dead, bring life. Every situation that has been broken, put it back together today. Break every cycle. Break every generational curse. Break every addiction. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. His blood is against you. We bind you and we loose the anointing that destroys the yoke. Everything that's not like you has to go. We speak the name of Jesus. Every foul, unclean spirit that might hear this broadcast today, I command you in the name of Jesus, by the authority of the name of Jesus and the blood of Jesus, Jesus, to come up and out of God's people in the name of Jesus. Every situation has to go. Every circumstance has to go. Darkness cannot dwell in light. Let there be blessings. Let there be power. And let there be anointing upon your people in the name of Jesus. May the Lord bless you. May He keep you. And may He make His face to shine upon you in the precious, lovely name of Jesus Christ we pray.
Amen and amen. I love you. I'm going to see you next week. Not at 3 o'clock. Don't forget, not at 3 o'clock. We're going to be doing it around 11 o'clock. I'm going to be from live from the sanctuary of Iglesia Trinidad. We're going to be live from the beautiful sanctuary of Iglesia Trinidad. And I can't wait. I've got a word that I've been waiting for months to preach. And finally the Lord has said, it's time, baby. It's time. And we are going to preach it. I'm ready. And I love you. I'm praying for you this week. Please pray for me. And I'll see you next week. God bless you.